On today's toy spot, we're going to be having a look at DC Universe Wave 10, the Imperiax Wave. Today we're looking at figure 6 of Wave 10. We're looking at the figure of Forger. My Forger packaging is a bit warped. However, he still does come with the head and lower torso of Imperiax. The packaging features, won't cover too much on it, but the fact the packaging in the background features the characters that make up DC Universe Wave 10. So we've got Batman down below, Joker, we've got Man Bat, we've got Robot Man, Beast Boy, Power Girl, and then up at the top we've got Forger. On the back of the package, the figures that make up Wave 10 of the Imperiax Wave. We got Robot Man, we got Beast Boy, the Joker, we got a repaint of a Batman, Power Girl, a repaint of the DC Superheroes Man, uh, Man Bat, and finally Forger. Up at the top there you can see a picture of a very large and menacing Imperiax. Down below, the biography on Forger says, Forger was born among the bugs beneath New Genesis. Evolved humanoid insects scattered there as biological weapons years ago by the armies of New Genesis rival planet Apocalypse. Forger's forays to steal food from the surface world ultimately brought him into contact with Orion and Light Ray of New Genesis and helped them prevent one of Darkseid's most fearsome servants, Mantis, from ex exterminating all bugs. Statistics, first appearance of the New Gods, number 9, 1972. Real name, Nun. Occupation, Warrior. Base of Operations, New Genesis. Special Abilities. Superior Hand-to-Hand -hand Combat. Enhanced Speed and Leaping Ability. Uh, ad adhesive Pads on feet enable him to run up walls. Equipped with Shield and Acid Pod. There you go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of a break. I'm going to get this opened up, and we are going to have a better look at Forger. More to come, guys. Stay tuned. And Forger comes with two pieces of Imperiax. For one thing, he comes with the lower under ruse. I always use under ruse because I find it funny. He comes with the lower under ruse of Imperiax. What we'll do is we'll take the upper torso. You know how this goes by now. You take the lower torso, the lower under ruse, you take the upper torso of Imperiax that came with Robot Man. You'll see there's a little peg underneath, there's a little peg hole. We're just gonna snap the two together. Um, what I might actually do though is I might hold off from doing this. It just occurs to me now, if I take the little tiny under ruse, which they are incredibly small, and I peg them into here, I might have a tough time getting the legs in. I might not. So I might. what I might do is I might just leave them off for the time being. Sound like a plan? Yes? Okay. We'll put that aside. He also does come with the head. There it is right there. The very gruesome head of Imperiax. Now there's nothing really stopping me from putting the head in, into the torso now. So you know what? I denied you guys the lower torso. I think I'm going to at least put the head in. And I have heard, and I'm already experiencing this now, I have heard that there is a problem getting the head of Imperiax to actually stay on. As you can see, it was a little loose. You just have to put a little bit of extra finesse. And now you've got a head that's not going to come off. So you have so far an upper torso, no underoos, no arms, no legs. It will progressively get better, I, I assure you. We'll just put Imperiax to the side, by the way, just to give you guys, again, a scale comparison. He is already, well, give or take a little bit, he is about the same size as Forger. Put that aside, let's have a look at Forger. And, uh, again, I really know very little of Forger. I didn't read any New Gods comics whatsoever growing up. That was like the Jack Kirby era. Um... I think really the only, and, and perhaps I'm not the only one that is that feels this way, I think my really my only introduction to Forger and the majority of the, the new Genesis characters 
and the New Gods characters, I think a lot of it came from Justice League Unlimited. There was an episode where they go and uh, they encounter Forger here, Light Ray, Orion. That was about the only time I had ever any exposure to this guy. He was seemed alright in the cartoon, and uh, he certainly looks like him. The figure certainly looks a lot like him as well. I think they did a pretty good job. Um... One thing, one thing that I have uh, not so much of an issue with, but it's something that I, I know uh, if you look at the older versions of DC Universe figures compared to the DC Universe figures that are being released now, uh, it's even more apparent when you start seeing the, re the reissued uh, uh, figures such as like uh, Lex Luthor, Luthor was uh, reissued, uh, Supergirl was reissued, uh, Azrael was re reissued Batgirl. You can really see that the... Oh, and actually, a, a good another good example is the Mad Love... I think that's probably the best example, is the Mad Love Harley Quinn. Um, if you compare the newer released figures of the same figures versus the originals, uh, you'll notice that the paint is a lot nicer on the newer figures. I'm noticing a trend when it comes to red seems like the color red you can really tell on older figures um, is a lot more faded we zoom into the legs of forger you'll notice that the legs themselves are really washed they're really faded almost as if the sun has gotten to them now, I, i've had these figures packed away for a while so they really haven't had any contact with the sun but it is definitely apparent that the the older figures suffer from a really weak paint a really weak plastic color. Now, if this was, say, to be re-released, it's very unlikely they would re-release Forger. I don't think he's that big of a character. Uh, but if they re-released him in a figure, you probably would notice a lot of these, the whites, the reds, and everything else would be a lot sharper. Having said that, though, it's still a nice-looking figure. I like the fact, I like the, the black detailing that they've done on the sides of the legs. And of course, he's got his shield. His shield can come off. Like so, it's just a, it's just got a plastic strap strapping across it. You can easily just slide his his wrist through it. He's also got himself a blue strap here. Also, doesn't look like it can come off. There's no area on it that's pegged, but I'm sure you could easily just unloop it and and slide it down the the arm. There's no reason why I would want to take it off, but it is there if you'd like. Uh, the face itself uh, has a very Jack Kirby style to it. I like the gold that they've put in the on the eyes there as well. You know, very uh, you know what very very similar to Robot Man. I would say if you followed the New Gods and New Genesis and all those comics. You probably would pick up uh, Forger here the very same way that you would probably have picked up the Light Ray and, uh, and the Orion. Uh, having not followed the comics, the same way as I, I didn't follow the Doom Patrol comics, um, I would say that this figure is really not necessarily one you need to pick up, um, f then really for no other reason than at least you have a Collect and Connect. Which unfortunately, I think if you listen to any collector out there of these figures, uh, they probably will tell you the same thing. I know each wave will only will generally have one or two figures that you really really want and as a completionist or as somebody who wants to put together a collect and connect figure you usually are inclined then to pick up other figures that you probably don't even want uh, still though I like I like uh, Forge here quite a bit his articulation is that he has a swivel in the head it looks like it can go up slightly but not not really a lot He's got the pin and socket shoulders that will allow his arms to move back and forth, in and out. A rotation in the bicep, a bend at the elbow, rotation in the hand, bend at the upper torso. He's got a swivel in the waist. His legs can bend back and forth, in and out. Rotation in the thigh, bend at the knee, and also bend at the foot. So again, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but uh, I, I like Darkseid. I really like Darkseid, and I really like I, I really like uh, 
you know, a lot of the, the figures, a lot of the characters that fall under uh, his end of it. So I would say maybe if you don't, if you're not a fan of, of characters such as this, if you at least have a diorama set up and you have these guys against Darkseid's minions, you know, it, this is probably a good figure to pick up. If you really know very little about the new gods and all that, um, I would say that likely this figure is a figure that you'd want to pass on. Still though, Forger, I'm going to give a 6-2. He's, he's interesting. I will say he is an interesting looking figure. He looks very different than other DC Universe figures that have been released. He's got, he's got a bit of a likable charm to him. Today's Toy Spot, though, we were having a look at the DC Universe Wave 10 Forager. You like him or you don't like him. He is really the figure f version of Root Beer. It's an acquired taste. Still, though, we got our head out of it and missing under ruse. So, can't go wrong with that. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys. Let me know down below what you guys think of Forger here. And uh, you know what? Let me know if you read the New Gods comics. In the meantime, I'm going to wrap this up here. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at Forger. And I will see you guys next time.